It's 240 feet wide, 360 feet long, and holds over 12 million gallons of water. This is the mask, the maneuvering and seakeeping basin at the Naval Service Warfare Center at Carterock. It's one of the largest indoor oceans in the world, making the mask the most advanced test facility of its kind. So why does the Navy need an indoor ocean? The truth ripples in these dimly lit, somewhat mysterious waters. I can honestly say I, this is a world-class facility. Uh, it's the largest, one of the largest basins of its type in the world. Um, the ability to recreate accurately and repeatedly the seaways that you're going to see out in the real world allow us to evaluate a lot of variables and understand the system. That's a big important part of what we do here is the ability to figure out why things are, are the way they are, to be able to design around them or understand where the system works together to allow us to, to uh, improve the system's uh, performance. So this wave pool is uh, called the MASK, the Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin. And so in this pool has the capability to simulate ocean waves. And so what we actually do is we'll put a scale model of a Navy vessel, whether it's been built already or it's something that they're planning to build, and actually test it before they actually build the, uh, the, the real ship. So that way the Navy can then get some feedback on what design they're using and make any adjustments that they might need. How does it work? How does it work? So you've got 216 individual finger-like paddles, and they push on the water like this, like piano keys. And what it does is then it creates different kinds of ocean waves. Very, there are many different kinds of waves. Um, waves are different in different parts of the world, and they're different depending on whether you're close to shore or away from shore, whether you're in a storm or not. And we actually have the capability of programming all those different kinds of waves to test in. We can do a lot of different types of testing here, everything ranging from energy efficiency testing on new wave boys uh, to, but to, for the warfighter and the warfighter support, it's usually to do with uh, operability, um, flight operations, looking at ship motions in a seaway to understand what, what our capabilities are. Um, also, it, we do uh, assist in initial design as well, assisting with uh, making sure that the the system works uh, up to the performance specification that, we've, the, that we paid for as the Navy. I have to understand that uh, uh, as long as we've been building ships and boats, we really have only started understanding how they really, really work in about the last hundred years. And we're still not there yet. So being able to do uh, scale model testing of ships, uh, especially now that we're looking at trimarans and catamarans and surface effect craft, that sort of thing, with requirements for landing aircraft on it and uh, AUVs and that sort of thing. We really need to understand how they operate. And this uh, facility gives us that understanding, allows us to do scale model tests and really understand the ship before it goes to sea. The kind of work that we do here helps us assess the capabilities of technologies that the Navy plans to build or plans to use. And so just as part of the entire product development cycle, we're kind of like the, at the early stages of testing those kinds of technologies. So for example, if there's a new kind of hull form, we can tell the Navy, hey, this hull form does really good in certain circumstances, but might not be so good in these circumstances. And from that point on, you know, you need to adjust the way your machinery operates, or you may want to consider how your sailors might be reacting to the different kind of situations that we would test. Though this seems a little disconnected from the warfighter, this is an integral part of making a fully functional ship that gets us to the theaters and to the places that we need to be in this world to keep the American public safe. We can nail uh, at scale the conditions all over the world. So it's not just that we can do some kind of rote sea states. We can actually do the kind of seas they can expect in the North Atlantic, in the South Pacific, uh, in littoral areas, that sort of thing. So that's what gives us uh, a real leg up. It's not just some generic sea condition, but the specifics of where they're going to be operating. What makes our work so significant here is, one, we're on the cutting edge of technology, and then two, the end product is, I think, going to some kind of good, which is the benefit of our sailors in the Navy. Research and development for uh, both uh, the Navy enterprise, um, but really for the country as a whole, uh, is a critical thing. Uh, the future uh, requires a good um, science and technology and research and development base. Uh, we're working hard in STEM areas to try to keep our uh, young folks interested in engineering and sciences. I think it's a fundamental requirement of the country to be able to do this kind of thing. 
Uh, I would like people to understand that and understand that places like this and NASA need to have some uh, realistic funding and, and, and support from the American people uh, to keep this country strong.